Alright, happy Friday everyone. Thanks for joining us here. It's, uh, it's a wonderful Friday here in Southern California. And this is Dr. Michael, your natural alternative for thyroid problems, okay? So if you have any thyroid problems, uh, we can help you along through that issue. I don't know if you've been diagnosed with thyroid problems, if you're on one of the drugs, you know, um, levothyroxine or Synthroid or something like that. But many times, even those uh, medications, the thyroid stimulating hormone medications, aren't really fixing the problem because many times there's an autoimmune problem. There's a problem with conversion, which means that you're not really converting T4, which uh, your body produces uh, 97, 93% of that, and uh, T3, which it only produces 7%. But that T4 is autoimmune. Auto it has to eventually get to T3 because that's the active form that every cell in our body actually has a thyroid receptor site. So it's turning on the energy for our body, the T3. So today what we want to talk about is we want to talk about skin health, okay? So I see a lot of patients with a lot of skin issues and it's important as we go through this process to understand, well, what are the key things for, you know, uh, for keep it getting your skin healthy. Well, one, you do want to get that gluten-free diet. I can't tell you how many times I had patients with acne that when they got off the gluten and they start, you know, U T N. How are we doing? Looks really dark. It is dark. Can you turn the light back there? It looks very dark. Thank you. Once we got to a gluten-free diet, tell me how that is. She's going to give us an idea here. Rose is our technical director. <laughs> so anyways, when we look at the gluten-free diet, that's real critical because we know gluten, if you heard our uh, talks before, gluten does have an effect on your gut, on that small intestine, creating what we call a leaky gut. So gluten is really bad for the skin. Why? Because it creates an overall inflammatory process. That's what it does. So getting off gluten and then healing that gut is really important. And remember, you know, the testing, if you've got to be proven that you have a gluten sensitivity or gluten intolerance or celiac, we have the special test for there. Blood tests are not a good way of identifying if you have a gluten problem because you could have uh, full-blown celiac and not necessarily show a positive in the blood or even a biopsy. Are we better as far as the light? Yeah. What's happening there? You can see this corner. Right oh, here. you can. Okay. So, we got a little thing we can lean against, a little buck. We're going to try to change that. I had a tripod that we went ahead and uh, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would like it because of the fact that... It kind of messes things up. Thank you. All right. So we're going to make sure that everything looks really good here. So what is getting that gluten-free diet for your skin health? What it does, it brings down inflammation. Anytime that we bring down inflammation, we're helping the overall. We're helping the internal and the external part of our bodies. Secondly, we got to make sure that what we're doing is avoiding other things like possibly soy, which a lot of people are going to have reactions to, and dairy. So these are two key things. You might not be able to see this writing. That's fine. But soy and dairy. Soy is usually genetic mod genetically modified. It's a problem because it's going to affect your hormones. And it's really what we call phytoestrogen. So it's a plant-based estro estrogen, which is going to drive your estrogen levels up. And a lot of times, you know, we can have corresponding uh, hormonal issues with our skin. You know, the reactions and things like that. Now, it's important that you're eating plenty of vegetables. So it's vegetables that are really important because vegetables actually create more of a healing than do fruits. So here's a way to really put it. Fruits are going to go ahead and cleanse, but vegetables are going to heal. So good vegetables to look at is one like broccoli. That's outstanding. Two, Brussels sprouts. More of the cabbage, the denser cabbage type of vegetables are going to be better health-wise. And they have that type of situation where they're going to be eliminating a lot of what we call the xenoestrogens. You might never have heard of this, but you're going to find that 
in a lot of different things. You're going to find that in deodorants. You're going to find that in, in suntan screening lotions. And you're going to find that in the plastics. So one thing we recommend, stop drinking out of plastic. And we'll talk more about that as far as, or we'll try to get you a link for a good filtration uh, thing, uh, apparatus, because it's not good enough to just have your refrigerator. If you have like a filter, you know, attach your fil uh, to your refrigerator freezer, it's not enough as far as getting rid of the impurities. There's impurities like even medications in the water. There's arsenic. There's all kinds of stuff. There's chlorine. There's fluoride. All these chemicals which are really not good for your health. So, uh, eating plenty of vegetables, limit your fruits. When we talk about the fruits, the, the uh, what we call the pitted fruits, like nectarines or peaches, plums, pears, apples, uh, berries. The berries are probably the best except for strawberries. Strawberries we're never a big fan of because the big thing about strawberries, whether it's organic or not, they, the root ball, is surrounded with the plastic. And that plastic plastic turns into a methyl uh, blow, uh, bromide, which is really horrible on the thyroid. So it attacks the thyroid big time. So stay away from strawberries unless you're growing your own. Otherwise, I wouldn't eat them, even if they're organic. Because uh, we had a patient that actually, her family grew strawberries, and I was saying, well, are they spraying chemicals on it? No, but they're still packing those root balls in that plastic to kind of protect the roots. And so that eventually is going to be absorbed in the plant and you're eating that, it's no good. So avoid the strawberries. Sleep, you need to get about seven, eight hours a night of sleep. Sleep is real critical. But it's also important that you do not eat three hours before you go to bed. So think of it in terms of this. Our energy is greatest expended during digestion. So what are we trying to do? Well. We want to make sure we don't eat before we go to bed. Again, three hours before you go to bed, stop eating so that once you, once you get to bed, your body needs to go ahead and focus on repair, regeneration, rebuilding. Don't eat before going to bed. Let your body repair during that sleep time because that's when the body is supposed to repair. It's also important that you have, you're in a dark room. Don't have, you know, lights on or anything like that. If you do have on a timer, you know, for normally however long it takes you to go to sleep. If it takes you, you know, a half hour to go to sleep, put maybe the timer on for 45 minutes or so so that everything is going to be shut down after that. So your room is dark. It's going to keep you in that state where you're into the, you know, the REMS, which is rapid eye movements, which is the most important as far as our healing time. So another thing is, is that hormones, of course, like we talked about, hormonal imbalance is a big issue. So we need to make sure, you know, if, if you have like, um, you know, if you're still menstruating, well, we gotta make sure that your hormones are in balance. And one of the best things to do there is to make sure that you're following the guidelines that I just recommended, but also making uh, sure that you exercise every, every day or at least getting that exercise for about an hour each time. That's exuding more blood flow throughout the body, which is critical for the whole, whole detoxification process. It's also important, of course, for the aerobic sense of our muscles, our heart, which is, of course, a muscle, and making sure it's good for our brain. Now, vitamin D is essential for your skin. So vitamin D is really critical. It's, it, it shouldn't really be called a vitamin. It should be called a hormone because it is involved in helping our immune system be stronger. It's important the skin health. Our numbers, and we, uh, we've talked about this before, numbers we really want is about 60 to 80 minimum. Okay, The normal range on a blood test is going to be anywhere between 30 to 100. But we want it at least 60 or above. That means that our, you know, we are helping our body to be much healthier, balance on everything. There's even been association with that with chronic pain. So vitamin D levels, by bringing the vitamin D levels up, that helps with the pain. Well, what does that really tell you is that it does help the overall inflammatory process. It is helping the brain. Okay. The other aspect is essential fatty acids. You might hear this a lot. EFAs. And EFAs are like 
fish, wild fish, of course, not farm raised, not fresh. When you go to the store, it's real important because you see, well, fresh fish, you think, wow, then maybe that was just caught. No, all it means is that it might have been raised in a farm, farm raised. You don't want that because in a farm raised, uh, it's like a pen, pen, which is out in the water and now they're giving them antibiotics and hormones like they're doing to the animals. So uh, that's why you don't want to eat any, uh, you know, uh, beef or anything like that just out of the store. You got to either have organic and that's okay, but grass fed's better when it comes to the beef. When it comes to the fish, it's got to be wild fish. Wild fish means that it's being caught out of the ocean. So the best fish there is like sardines. I know that some people have a hard time with sardines. But sardines are real high in what we call DHA. That's part of the uh, fish oil, of the omega-3s. So DHA actually stimulates an area of your brain called the hippocampus. Hippocampus is your short and long-term memory control center. And then the EPA, which is another part of the uh, omega-3s, the EPA in the fish oil is really good and affects the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is all about uh, calming the body down, getting the body relaxed. If you got kids or grandkids or whoever that might have any of the uh, ADHD, ADD, or autism spectrum disorders, known as ASD or autism, get them into having that good higher levels of fish oil. There's no such thing as having too much of the good quality fats. In fact, that's real critical when it comes to hormones because the hormones, your hormones are gonna be good with good quality fats. So, a few other tips, avoid fried foods. Fried foods, especially the browning of the fried foods, real bad. You don't wanna get things really dark and brown because that means that it's going through a degradation process. That's no good. French fries, not good, because that is uh, forming a chemical called acrylamide. I don't know if you ever heard of that, but it's a cancer-causing chemical, even in your chips, even in sweet potato chips. So I would avoid all chips unless you're making your own. If you're making your own, like a, out of sweet potato, cut thin and thin slices, bake it at about 100 degrees. The reason being is because anything that is cooked beyond that level, that temperature, is destroying everything good. And food is our nourishment, it's what makes us who we are, so it's real critical that our food is really alive, basically, okay? Even your meats, slow and low. Cook your meats, slow and low. Vegetables, either you're going to cook them, you know, maybe in a crock pot, that's really good, but put them in, they'll maybe the last half hour, hour. Use a pressure cooker, which is good because that will retain the nutrients, or a steamer. But try not to overcook your vegetables because, again, you don't want to cook the life out of them. You want to make sure that there's good quality there. So those are the key things for healthy skin. A couple other things that are oils which are really good. It's called black cumin oil. And that's called that's C-U-M-I-N, oil. That's really good health-wise, okay? It's part of the turmeric family. Family, And then the other one has got two cola. Got two cola is an, an herb. And that, you can find an oil. That's really good for the skin. And it's actually especially used on psoriasis or eczema. So if you have those type of skin conditions, that would be really good. The got two cola, the black, the black uh, cumin oil. So those are things that I use. No one, you know, we're all aging, but of course we want to age gracefully rather than, you know, having all these wrinkles and everything hanging. Another thing about skin, just one thing that I would add, <clears throat> I would avoid impact, a lot of impact, the pounding. If you ever look at individuals that are big time runners, you know, run 10, 15, 20 miles, all that jarring, you know, the skin of course is also jarring, everything in the body is jarring. I'm not a big fan of the impact, you know, that type of uh, thing as we age. It's better to get on a bicycle. It's better to go maybe for a power walk uh, and avoid the jarring type of mechanism on the body and the skin. So hopefully you find that useful. If you like our uh, live series, we try to do it every week and different times, of course, because, you know, it depends on my, patients, my time with patients. But if you like this, I uh, ask you to share it and tell others about this program. And we plan on doing this once a week as long as we're in town. So 
few things to just review. Vitamin D. Get your vitamin D level up there. It's real important that it is on the high end of normal, 60 to 80 minimum. Essential fatty acids. Essential fatty acids are real critical. High levels of EPA and DHA. I'll make sure Rosa puts a link on a few products that we really like because they are very, very high in the EPA and DHA and they're, they're really, uh, uh, you know, they taste pretty good. So we need the more fats, the better. And most people are not getting enough fat. And if you're not getting enough fat, you're not keeping your body healthy. You're not keeping your brain healthy. You're not keeping your skin healthy. With that, I say good night. Have a good weekend.